As the twin engines of the Black Hawk roar for a new mission, the powerful blades sweep through the air creating a cloud of dust and dirt. Within minutes, the pilot has the chopper rising thousands of feet in the air and racing at 150 miles per hour over the landscape of a foreign land. Today's mission is to pass over enemy territory and deliver an 11-team crew to a strategic location on the battlefield. The Black Hawk UH-60 helicopter has been a mainstay of American armed forces since it entered service in 1978. Its flexible configuration, survivability, and maneuverability make it the medium utility helicopter of choice by military forces around the world. The UH-60 and its derivatives have amassed more than 5 million flight hours, including casualty evacuations, troop transports, and search and rescue missions. In this video, you'll learn about the Black Hawk helicopter. We're going to focus on the UH-60 Black Hawk, describing its ability to fly, its use in combat operation, its development and its future prospects. A Black Hawk takes to the air like any other helicopter. Flight is achieved when the helicopter engines turn the tilted blades fast enough to generate lift. Lift is generated as the angled blades spin through the air. The blade rotation causes the air above the blades to move faster than the air below them, which creates pressure. Once that pressure under the blades is higher than the pressure above the blades, the helicopter lifts off the ground. Two General Electric T700 GE 701C turboshaft engines turn the drive shaft. The drive shaft extends to the top of the helicopter, where it connects to the rotor head, which is comprised of the rotor hub and four rotor blades. Each blade consists of a titanium spar, which is a metal strip that runs from the base of the blade to its tip, and a Nomex honeycomb material. The blade skin and trailing edge are made of composite materials. The stronger, leading edge of the blade is made of titanium and nickel and is trimmed with an anti-erosion strip, which protects the blade from wear as it skims across the treetops or flies in abrasive desert air. As the drive shaft turns the rotor head, the blades begin to spin. As the blades cut through the air, they create the rotor disc, which is the circle created as the blades spin. The diameter of the Black Hawk's rotor disc is 53 feet, 8 inches. Larger helicopters or helicopters that carry heavy loads, such as the Black Hawk, require a large rotor disc. The disc rotation of the Black Hawk generates enough force to lift the vehicle with crew, troops, and as much as a 9,000-pound external payload. In addition to controlling the disc rotation, the pilot can further increase lift by adjusting the swash plate assembly. This mechanism is a combination of two plates, one fixed and one rotating, that are attached to the main rotor. These plates control each blade's pitch or angle of attack. A change in each blade's pitch creates uneven lift, allowing the helicopter to tilt and fly in a particular direction. Torque created by blade rotation is exerted on the helicopter's fuselage, which will spin in a counter direction unless it's neutralized. A tail rotor, which is attached to the tail boom, is how most helicopters counteract the torque created by the main rotor. The tail rotor of the Black Hawk has an 11 feet blade that spins to create lateral force and stabilize the helicopter. By adjusting the pitch of the tail rotor, the pilot can turn the helicopter left or right. Its power and maneuverability allow the Black Hawk to move soldiers quickly to strategic locations on the battlefield and just as quickly get those soldiers back to safety. In the next section, you will learn more about how the Black Hawk is used to transport soldiers, artillery, and other equipment, and more about the built-in safety features that help the chopper survive if it comes under attack. Military or combat support requires moving many troops and tons of equipment to locations where planes or ground-based vehicles often can't reach. The Black Hawk was designed with these types of logistical missions in mind. Combining power and an adaptable configuration, the Black Hawk can ferry thousands of pounds of equipment, weapons, and nearly a dozen men to remote locations quickly. Three crew members are required to operate the UH-60 Black Hawk, including two pilots and one crew chief. In addition to the crew, the Black Hawk can carry 11 fully equipped soldiers. Multiple tie-downs on the cabin floor allow the interior and seat arrangements to be reconfigured to accommodate varied missions. Externally, the Black Hawk uses its external storage support system or EASSS to carry additional cargo. The EASSS consists of removable stub wings that attach to each side of the fuselage above the cabin. Each wing has two pylons, which can carry a total of 9,000 pounds of external loads, including fuel tanks, electronic countermeasure pods, 16 Hellfire anti-armor missiles, mine dispensers, and guns. A cargo hook located on the undercarriage gives the helicopter another method for carrying heavy loads, 
such as small vehicles, artillery, and large amounts of supplies. Inside the cockpit, the pilots can use an auto flight control system that includes autopilot and auto stabilization features. The navigational equipment includes First, an NASN-128 Doppler search radar, a radar altimeter that collects elevation signals used to determine topographical features. Also includes an automatic direction finder and a VOR marker beacon. Although it was not designed to be an assault vehicle like the Apache, the Black Hawk must be loaded with equipment for the crew and passengers to protect themselves in flight and on the ground. In the next section, we'll look at some of the built-in protections and artillery that provide defense for the Black Hawk. Crossing the battlefield, the Black Hawk is an inviting target for enemy gunfire and anti-aircraft fire. Due to the nature of its combat role, the Black Hawk must be able to withstand these types of small and medium arm strikes. The chopper's airframe is metal and other components including floors, doors, and fairings are composite. A fairing is used between joints of the helicopter to streamline those points for maneuverability and speed. To reduce damage during attacks, the helicopter has built-in tolerance to small arms fire and most medium caliber, high explosive projectiles according to Sikorsky. If it is hit, it also has a self-sealing, crash-resistant fuel system and ballistic-hardened flight controls. Additionally, armored seats and swing-out armor side panels protect the pilots. In case of emergency or hard landings, energy-absorbing landing gear and seats help protect crew and passengers. The Black Hawk can survive a vertical impact rate of 38 feet per second. The fin connected to the end of the tail can be swiveled up and down to help control the helicopter if the tail rotor fails or is lost. Additional protection is built into the fuel cells, which are crashworthy from a drop as high as 20 meters. Pilots can quickly escape after a crash by jettisoning the cockpit doors and exiting through the emergency pop-out windows. Not only does it need to withstand bullet and rocket fire, it must also be equipped so that the crew can retaliate with ammunition. Two gunners can be stationed to fire the helicopter's two 7.62mm machine guns mounted in the cabin windows to return fire and provide protection for soldiers entering and exiting the vehicle during battle. It can also use Hellfire missiles if so equipped. Some types of Black Hawks, such as those used as medevacs, are typically not equipped with missiles. Medivacs carry pods containing medical supplies. The E-Triple-S can also be outfitted with a 20mm gun pod or a 30mm chain gun. The Black Hawk is a product of the Vietnam War and as much as it was developed to address the weaknesses of Vietnam-era helicopters. In the next section, you will learn more about the Black Hawk's early development and how the US military plans to keep it operable for another 20 years. Helicopters entered military combat for the first time during World War II. Since then, their use has transformed from only search and rescue in medevac to that of assault weapon. Tactically, the helicopter evolved during the Vietnam War with the advent of the Bell UH-1 Iroquois helicopter, according to Stephen Tomichsik, author of Black Hawk. Tomichsik credits Lt. Col. Halmar with developing the battle tactic of sending troops into the battlefield using the Huey, and then quickly transporting soldiers back to safety when the fight was over. Moore and his role in the first major battle of the Vietnam War at Illa Drang was the basis for the book and movie We Were Soldiers. Based on the success of helicopter combat during the Vietnam War, the U.S. Army sought to devise a more advanced helicopter for use in battle. While the UH-1 showed that it was capable of moving troops to battle, the Army sought a design that was adaptable for different configurations, provided more power, and was quieter and more maneuverable than the Huey. The Army set up the Utility Tactical Transport Aircraft System program to develop this new transport helicopter. In 1972, both Boeing and Sikorsky were contracted to develop prototypes for this new breed of combat helicopter. Four years later, Sikorsky eventually won the competition to build the Army's new UH-60 a helicopter. It is tradition to name Army helicopters in honor of a Native American tribe. In that tradition, the U-60A was named the Black Hawk. The Black Hawk entered service in 1978, and it saw its first combat action in 1983 when United States forces invaded Grenada. Since it entered service, the Black Hawk has logged more than 5 million flight hours. It has provided transport for troops in Panama, Southwest Asia, Somalia, Haiti, Bosnia, Afghanistan, and Iraq. A new powertrain was added to the Black Hawk in 1989. 
Future upgrades are planned that will focus on advanced avionics, enhance survivability, and improve reliability. These improvements will ensure that the Black Hawk stays in the US arsenal through at least 2035. Today, the Black Hawk is adapted to serve varying purposes. In the next section, we will look at some of the variations that are derived from the UH-60. You can think of the UH-60 as the base version of this model of helicopter. It's much like a car in that it can be upgraded and refitted with different components depending on what you want to use it for. Every branch of service in the US Armed Forces and many foreign militaries use the Black Hawk or one of its many offshoots. Here is a look at the different variations of helicopter that are derived from the UH-60, which comes in many variants and many different modifications. The US Army variants can be fitted with the stub wings to carry additional fuel tanks or weapons. Variants may have different capabilities and equipment to fulfill different roles. So there is. UH-60 L Black Hawk is a UH-60 with upgraded engines, improved durability gearbox, and updated flight control system. Produced between 1989 and 2007, UH-60 LS are also being equipped with the GET-700 GE-701 D engine. MH-60 K Black Hawk is a special operations, first ordered in 1988 for use by the U.S. Army's 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment, Night Stalkers, equipped with the in-flight refueling pro and T-700 G-701 C engines, more advanced than the MH-60. L. The K model also includes an integrated avionics system, terrain following radar, color weather map, improved weapons capability, and various defensive systems. MH-60M Black Hawk which is a special operations version of UH-60M for US Army, features the Rockwell Collins, common avionics architecture system glass cockpit and more powerful engine. All special operations Black Hawks to be modernized to MH-60M standard by 2050. S-70 is a Black Hawk, designated and often used for exports. And the SH-60 Seahawk, this variant is a capable of multi-mission naval variation used by US Navy. Thank you for watching our mini documentary. If you liked the video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Also let us know what kind of topics you would like to see next.